Hi. Hello. In the last segment, we were analyzing Acts 2, 3, and 5, particularly with a view to trying to identify what the methodology of the apostles was. They go into public places, they worship with their fellow Jews, mm -hmm. and as a result of doing those things, things happen that weren't planned, like miracles, mm -hmm. and that gets the attention of the authorities, and specifically those who don't like the name Jesus and don't believe in the resurrection agitate for their arrest yeah. and imprisonment and it, even flogging. It get, it's the, the, the reason the people's ears are even open to them. Yeah. It's because of what's happened. What God has done in joining wit and bearing witness to what they are already mm -hmm. witnessing to right. about. So in chapter 17 we leap into a passage deep in the ministry of the Apostle Paul. He is now in Europe in chapter 16, the mission has moved from what we call today Turkey, Asia Minor, into Europe. And a great transition, of course, is occurring in the direction of Christianity into the world, into, into the entire world. But when, when we open chapter 17, he hasn't yet got where he wants to go, which is the centers of Greek civilization, Athens and Corinth. Mm -hmm. He's still in what we call today <coughs> Macedonia. And... Uh, a ministry starts. So well, let's read from 17, one, 1 to 9, just to ascertain whether the methodology of the apostles has got more sophisticated and more, and more uh, like Jehovah's Witnesses as 20 years has gone by. Mm -hmm. Here's the net result. Okay, so you're, I, I have trouble with the first two names of cities, so maybe read the first verse and then I'll carry on. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, and they came, came to, to the Thessalonica. Thessalonica. That one's okay for me. Where there was a synagogue of the Jews. So, according to Paul's custom, he went inside to them. And for three Sabbaths, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving by references that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This is the Christ, this Jesus, whom I am publishing to you. As a result, some of them became believers and associated themselves with Paul and Silas. And a great multitude of the Greeks who worshipped God, and not a few of the principal women, did so. But the Jews, getting jealous, took into their company certain wicked men of the marketplace, idlers, and formed a mob and proceeded to throw the city into an uproar. And they assaulted the house of Jason, and went seeking to have them brought forth to the rabble. When they did not find them, they dragged Jason and certain brothers to the city rulers, crying out, These men have overturned the inhabited earth, are present here also. And Jason has received them with hospitality. And all these men act in opposition to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, Jesus. They indeed agitated the crowd and the city rulers when they heard these things. And first, after taking sufficient security from Jason and the others, they let them go. So notice first the accusation reminds me again back, back in chapter 5, what's the Sanhedrin, the high priest, saying to the apostles you filled Jerusalem with your teaching it's yeah. a, it's probably an exaggeration mm -hmm. but we know how they felt now you have <laughs> they've turned the world upside down mm -hmm. well obviously that's an exaggeration but from the standpoint of the the politicians and especially the Jewish leaders in the synagogue this is a very disturbing thing that's happening yeah, they're but rocking the boat they're rocking the the boat of Judaism mm -hmm. but yet we know they're not separating themselves from their fellow Jews yeah because verse 2 said according to Paul's custom he went inside to them and that was at the temple or the, the, the synagogue the synagogue I mean he so, went into the synagogue in every large city of the Roman Empire there would be at least one synagogue and where does where do Paul and his associates go Mm -hmm. They always go to the Jew first. From yeah. here, from from the earliest mission back in chapter thirteen, yeah, to the last in Rome in uh, Acts twenty eight. Even when Paul is under house arrest mm -hmm. and cannot do what he did before, he calls the Jews to him. 
yeah. in Rome. That, that is a phrase that I had not really noticed when I was a witness, that phrase that's repeated over and over again, uh, that they go to the Jew first and then the Gentiles. And when it says, as was his custom, remember it was mm -hmm. Jesus' custom, Luke 4 says? Yeah. It was Jesus' custom to go to the synagogue. Even mm -hmm. the Son of God mm -hmm. continued to worship with his fellow Jews mm -hmm. during his ministry. Right. And went up to the temple. So we're not surprised to see that Paul and his associates, apparently, go to the synagogue on three Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. So do we imagine that he just opens the doors to the synagogue and starts preaching? No, he's joining in the worship service, which might have been several hours long. This mm. was the custom in the synagogues mm -hmm. throughout the Roman Empire. So he would be he would be joining with them in the worship service, mm -hmm. and as was also the custom of the synagogues, if they had a new rabbi or a visiting rabbi with them, they would often ask him to say something mm -hmm. of encouragement yeah. to the yeah. to the congregation. Yeah. And then he would use that opportunity. So he would have been good mannered and waited probably for <laughs> for an invitation to speak. He's not standing outside the synagogue with, with, a, a, with a sign saying Judaism is a snare is a... and a racket. Yeah. So he's reasoning with them. Isn't that interesting? They get their, mm -hmm. their handbook title, Reasoning from the Scriptures, from this very verse. He's yeah. reasoning from the Scriptures, but is he using a handbook on the street no. or at the door? He's in the place where they have the scrolls. So they have the scriptures there that they can refer to. The only place where the average Jew would access scriptures is in the yeah. synagogue. He yeah. knows where he has to go to do this. And, and this, yet, this again would be their scriptures, the Old Testament. The Old Testament. And it's talking about the Messiah that they're waiting for, that they're looking for. Uh, and no doubt in this context at least it would be the Septuagint, the Greek version of the scriptures that were mm. being used and, and understood by the Jews who lived in, mm. in Greece or Macedonia. So this is a great opening for the gospel message. Yeah. That the Messiah you were waiting for is Jesus. He is the Christ. So if the witnesses were to use the precedent of the apostles from the book of Acts for their methodology, what would we, what would they have to change? Well, their message, verse 3 says, he, he uses, it, he's explaining and proving with references that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead. And he says, this is the Christ, that Jesus, whom I am proclaim, publishing to you. Mm -hmm. So the message is about Jesus and the resurrection. It's not the message of witnesses. Has the Watchtower managed to get the name Jehovah mm -hmm. in here anywhere in these nine verses? No. No, they haven't. And there you have the the take of the administrators, and the, for that matter, the, the synagogue leaders, upon what the message is in verse 7. What's the, what's the in they have with the Roman authorities? It's that this preaching involves another king, mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. Not another king, Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Another king, Jesus. So there's the kingdom, but it's not so much about the kingdom, i.e. the the mm -hmm. entity as about the king. Yeah, who they're proclaiming as king. Well, it was pr pretty clear, so that the Jews and the Gentiles couldn't miss it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I think this is a very fruitful area of inquiry and pro possibly dialogue development with Jehovah's Witnesses as mm -hmm. we go, we all go forward trying to reach our relatives and friends yeah. who are still in the watchtower. That both the m the message and the method are and, not what we and assume. And the place. Yeah. Where they're pre where they're publishing this, where they're talking about it, they're talking about it at the worship place of the the people they're talking to, not at their door. Yeah, and that does address another question that's come up recently, which is, is there a clear separation between the Jews and the Christians? Well, there wasn't, and so we could go right to the end of the Book of Acts. We probably will do a video on that where Paul goes back to Jerusalem for the last time and we find that the Jewish Christians there, James and the elders say, are zealous for the law. They were well known among their fellow Jews for being very devout Jews, mm -hmm. but also Christians. Right. So they, they never lost they the ear of the, right. of the Jewish public. They didn't stop being Jewish. They just were extending, you know, the fulfillment. We know about the fulfillment. You don't. <clears throat> yeah, a large difference. 
And mm-hmm. so the more we could use these passages with Jehovah's Witnesses, I think, mm-hmm. the more fruitful it will be because after all, the Watchtower brags about their unique work constantly yeah. and somehow manages to find justification yeah. in the book of Acts. So yeah. if, if you know your way around Acts, yeah. around these chapters, you can quickly disarm them of their door-to-door proof texts. Yeah. There's only two pay, of them. Pay close attention to locations and message, what they're speaking about, by looking at the text and the surrounding verses. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. was that cliche we heard so many years ago, back when we started working with our fellow uh, CRI, Christian Research Institute mm. uh, colleagues? A text without a context is, is a, a pretext. pretext. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm.